Good afternoon and welcome to the Pathways webinar presented by Aspire Labs, a Vermillion company. Um, my name is Keontae Key. I'm the Digital Customer Experience Manager for Aspire Labs and moderator for today's webinar. Our team will take you through the new changes to the new Oval One uh, results report along with the case study. At any time during the webinar, you can place your questions in the QA box and we'll do our very best to answer them at the end of the webinar. Uh, any questions that we aren't able to get to uh, will be emailed to Dr. Francis and Dr. Fritchie to answer. So we're going to go ahead and get started and hand it over to Dr. Francis and Dr. Fritchie to introduce themselves and we'll get started with the webinar. Okay. Um, hi everybody, my name is Dr. Mark Francis. I am a gynecologist in San Antonio. Um, and I am the new Chief Medical Officer for Vermilion Laboratories. Hi, and I'm Dr. Herb Fritchie, and I am the uh, Laboratory Director of Aspire Laboratories. And we do the test, uh, testing and send out the test reports. Okay. All right, we're going to get started really briefly just to remind you the clinical application of OVA-1. Um, when you have a patient who presents with an adnexal mass, obviously you have a lot of variables that are going to come into play when you're deciding how to manage that mass. Um, you have your history, your imaging, and then if you add your OVA-1 score, that's going to increase the sensitivity of understanding a risk of malignancy. So a low risk score obviously gives you the confidence to keep that patient within your own provider uh, capabilities, to operate on them, or potentially even to delay a surgery if you really think that you might be able to reevaluate in six weeks. An elevated risk gives you the opportunity to either refer immediately to a higher specialized level of care with the GI oncologist um, or to have them as backup when you take the patient to surgery. So just a little reminder of where OVA-1 actually comes into play clinically. You can go to the next slide. Um, this is what the new report is going to look like. It is very different. Um, you will see sort of in the top left is the actual score, and it will tell you whether it is an elevated risk or um, uh, a low risk. Um, and below that, you will now see that you have the CA-125 level also reported out. Um, this, we felt, was extremely important, especially for your patients who went on to have a malignancy. You had an early baseline CA-125 that the oncologist could then refer back to. Below with the graph is what we call the Goodrich graph. And today's uh, webinar is to actually explain to you how the Goodrich graph is used clinically to further assess the risk of malignancy for your patients. I already mentioned that the CA-125 um, is now going to be listed out separately. It will be the only biomarker of the five listed out separately. Um, and again, I explained the reason why for those who have a malignancy, you have an early baseline. You go on to the next slide. And then um, I already explained the good graph and how we're going to use it. So we'll go right into the case study. This is a 41-year-old P3. She presented to the office with pelvic pain. Um, the pain was right-sided. Um, a uh, mass was palpated on exam, and an ultrasound showed an ovary that was 5 by 5 by 8.4 by 9.1 centimeters. Um, the cyst within the ovary was actually not that impressive. It was 3.3 by 3.9 centimeters inside. Small amount of tissue along one of the um, medial margins of the cyst, um, and that measured only five millimeters. So this is an ultrasound that you may or may not consider high risk. If you consider that uh, tissue a papillary projection, then yes, it would be a high risk ultrasound. If you thought that potentially it was just a clot within the cyst, then you may not consider it that high risk of an ultrasound. We could go on to the next slide. Her OVA-1 score, however, was 9.4, um, which is significantly elevated, indicating that she has an increased risk of a malignancy. So if you take her um, CA-125 level, which was actually normal, um, and if that was the only score that you had actually, or the only biomarker you had ordered, you would consider this to be most likely a benign condition. Um, but with her over one score of being is, is significantly elevated, you can now use the Goodrich graph, and you can take her score and the fact that she is premenopausal, and you can plot it against those two bottom lines. So if you read it as either a low-risk ultrasound or a high-risk ultrasound, you can say, well, I know that her risk of malignancy is probably going to be somewhere between 40 and 
70%. And that's a pretty big range. But even if you read that as a low risk ultrasound, a 40% chance of malignancy is still significant enough that you want to make sure you're prepared when you go into the operating room. You want pathology to be there to do a frozen, and you want your tumor oncologist to be a backup. Obviously, if you read that ultrasound as high risk and you're thinking that her likelihood of malignancy is more like 70%, then you want to get her to the G1 oncologist immediately. So it just gives you more information to properly manage the patient. In this case, the single surgery was performed with the G1 oncologist on backup, and the patient had a papillary serous borderline tumor of the ovary identified. Again, this would have been missed had you only obtained the CA125 level. We'll go on to the next. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Fritchie to talk a little bit further about the new result report. Thanks, Mara. Uh, I would just uh, add to uh, Tamara's uh, description uh, just some uh, key uh, points. I think that if you look at the um, graph, you'll see that uh, there is uh, extra benefit uh, for defining risk uh, when, uh, when you look at the more borderline scores, uh, ranging, let's say, from three to six, uh, you can see uh, in both the case of the uh, pre- and post menopausal cases uh, that when the uh, imaging, uh, the ultrasound report is uh, uh, positive uh, or in indicating presence of cancer, uh, that uh, the OVA score um, becomes uh, more prominent uh, and the com combination report uh, increases the risk uh, considerably. So um, the graph is uh, especially important in those borderline cases. Uh, I think that's the only point that I would add, except uh, to note there that if you would like to have a discussion of the over one results uh, with me or to go into detail about the individual parameters, uh, feel free to uh, click on the uh, barcode there uh, and schedule a call. Uh, I'll be happy to take a call at any time. Uh, if I'm not available, just leave your uh, information and I will get back to you to discuss your patient. Mara? Okay, I think we're going to turn it over to questions right now, if anyone has a question. Okay, and we have a question um, from someone. When will the test be available? When will the new report be available? Well, the test is available right now. The new report, Dr. Fritchie? Uh, the new reports are in their final uh, uh, stages of approval and uh, being um, uh, in, introduced into our uh, automatic reporting system. Uh, and so I would think that probably by the middle of the month, uh, by the middle of next month, these reports uh, should be routine. Okay. And I don't see any other questions. Okay, so we'll just go on to the next slide. Um, so thank you again for participating in this Pathways webinar. If you do have uh, more questions about the new Oval One Results Report, you can set up some time to speak with your sales rep. Um, you can also email marketing at vermilion.com about questions or supporting materials. And you can also schedule time with our chief medical officer and lab director by emailing them directly. Um, or you could, and or you can join our webinar. Our next webinar, December 14, 2016, um, and Dr. Uh, Francis and Dr. Fritchie will go through interpreting cutoff ranges on the new overall results report, and they'll look at two more case studies. Um, okay, we have two more questions, actually. Okay. Um, how will the results be shared? So, typically, your lab results will come to you via a fax, um, and with the new report, we don't expect that to change. Okay, and someone else wants to know why was the report changed? The report was changed because a single OVA1 score, while it holds value with regards to being able to assess an agnexal mass, obviously there's a lot that goes into figuring out how you're going to manage an agnexal mass. There's patient symptoms, there's your clinical impression, 
there's ultrasound findings, and then there's your OVA-1 score. Um, when Goodrich published his paper combining OVA-1 score with ultrasound assessment to be able to define a risk of malignancy, that is just more information that the provider is able to use in order to better manage that patient in the event that they do have a malignancy. We all know that there's a, about a 30% increased survival for ovarian cancer patients who have their initial surgery with a GYN oncologist versus a regular GYN or a general surgeon. So again, it's just combining information that you have in a more useful way to make a better clinical care pathway for your patient. Excellent. Okay, and that wraps it up for us. Um, again, thank you for joining the webinar. Uh, we recorded this webinar, so if a colleague wasn't able to um, participate, they could, you can always share it with them to view later. Um, and any questions we weren't able to get to, uh, we will definitely email you and make sure that you have the answers you need. Thank you again for participating.